Our society needs more options. It can't just be a choice between high-priced gas and high-priced batteries. There needs to be an affordable option. Something easy to maintain that future generations can inherit and still have a healthy environment. The most common response I get when I tell people that compressed air is a sustainable option for transportation is that that is crazy. The truth is, what we're doing is crazy. Crazy is billionaires spending millions polluting the atmosphere flying around in rockets while we cut down our forest to fund our schools. Crazy is sending soldiers off to die so you can keep your car running on fossil fuels. Crazy is using technologies that are detrimental to life on Earth. Crazy is not looking at all the options. Because even the richest can't get off this planet very long. When I first started working on compressed air transportation research, I thought my job was to develop regenerative air brakes so that a compressed air powered vehicle could pump air back into its expansion chambers. What I found out was that the lowest cost compressed air motors that were over one horsepower were about a thousand dollars. I figured there had to be a double action cylinder motor like they used on steam engines, but all I could find were hobby kits, not meant to actually be used. I thought there had to be a rotary valve that could be used to operate a cylinder, but it wasn't available. So I set about designing one. I came up with the idea of having a block with holes and a shaft that rotates with notches on both sides. On one side of the shaft, the notches lined up holes that connected hoses to the cylinders with holes that had compressed air. On the other side of the shaft, the notch connects the holes that had the hoses connected to the cylinders with holes that exhausted the open air. This would push a piston back and forth as the shaft rotates, alternating between the two sides. So by adding a groove on the pressure side and creating notches going the other direction, offset by 90 degrees, it creates a single valve that operates both sides of two double action cylinders or four single action cylinders. This creates an entire motor with power available from any angle from a stationary position. With four cylinders and as little as five moving parts. It can be scaled to any size, to suit any purpose, and can be run off any pressurized gas or fluid. It has an endless list of applications. It can be used in hazardous places, flammable spaces, dusty and dangerous places, even underwater. And it's the lowest cost motor ever falls into a category known as disruptive technologies, which means other people will lose profits if you start selling it, and they'll be willing to invest in stopping you. This is one of the reasons I chose to open source the idea and post the valve designs free to use on the internet. The main reason I chose to share the motor is because it makes it possible to create compressed air powered vehicles at a fraction of the cost of an electric even less than a gas-powered car, which makes it a very realistic way we can transition to sustainable energy. For a full transformation to be possible, it has to be something anyone can do, freely and with guidance from the community. Another reason I chose to open source the valve is because it is so simple that anyone can do it. Who would want to try, if it's even possible, to stop people from making their own? The amount of applications is nearly infinite, from yard tools to shop equipment, heavy machinery, aviation, stuff that floats, things that go underwater, underground, maybe even outer space. The possibilities are endless. Compressed air is ideal for emergency vehicles and vehicles in remote locations when they might sit for several years unused. I think we are all well aware of the issues batteries and gas-powered devices have when they sit for extended periods. Vehicles that run on compressed air can be maintained in a response-ready state by simply monitoring the pressure in the tanks. The same is true for yard equipment. Switching to compressed air would nearly eliminate off-season equipment failure. The reason compressed air was not considered an option in the past was due to inefficiencies. Even a low-cost vehicle would get expensive if the source of energy came from fossil fuels and was then converted to compressed air. Even compared with the high cost of an electric vehicle, the cost to charge would be at least twice as much on a compressed air. 
So if that energy was purchased from the grid, it might even compensate for the ongoing battery replacement. Financially. You could never repay the environment. Now if we factor in the current cost of solar panels and wind turbines, you will find compensating for inefficiencies is quite affordable. And you can purchase those extra panels, the compressor, and everything for less than the starting cost of a battery-powered car. Compressed air is the lowest cost option for short-range solar-powered transportation. Isn't that something we should invest in developing for the betterment of our society and future generations? A low-cost reliable, easy to create infrastructure that doesn't have supply chain bottlenecks or proprietary information? An open source solution we can work towards as a society that chooses as individuals to create a sustainable system, something we can pass down with pride to future generations, a system they can build off of, adapt and learn from, knowing confidently they will never run out of air to charge their tanks with. A system that can be created from recycling our failing fossil fuel infrastructure and doesn't send future generations digging deeper into the earth in search of rare metals. If we want to switch to using sustainable green options for our transportation, we really have to think things through. When you have a situation that's far from an energy source, for example in the middle of the desert or a mountaintop, it only makes sense to create that energy for transportation from our lowest cost options, which are currently green energy, wind, and solar. Trying to store that energy in chemical batteries creates a logistical problem of sourcing massive amounts of materials. And then it needs to be replaced every decade or so. This just kicks the can down the road. And by the time the next generation that gets to clean up the mess, on top of dealing with the consequences of using fossil fuels, while attempting to come up with enough materials from a mined out planet to rebuild a whole new infrastructure, maybe we really need to think, what direction are we going? I can't expect others to make the sacrifices I have made. The last seven years of my life have been focused on building and promoting air powered bikes. And for the last seven months, I've been living in isolation, turning down every invitation distancing myself from friends, loved ones, obsessively building the parts I need to assemble an air-powered motorcycle. Parts that represent weeks or months of problem solving, material sourcing and fabrication, built on years of knowledge that can only be gained through hands-on experience. I know by walking this path, it will clear a way for others and uncover the obstacles that lay hidden in the unexplored territory of compressed air transportation research not been easy and I would never have made it this far without the support of a handful of people. People like Mike, Rick, Josh, Steve, and Preston that have all been supportive since the beginning. If I could get others to be half as supportive, if I could find a hundred people to contribute a hundred dollars, I can easily get through my next project without having to sell something. If word spreads and a half a million people give me ten dollars, well, then we can have a factory producing kits to convert a regular bike to run on compressed air. I understand not everyone has access to a 4,500 PSI compressor. The first buyers would be owners of paintball shops, scuba divers, firefighters, safety supply, and other people who already have access to a charging station. Once the technology is known, small communities like apartments, retirement villages, industrial parks, yacht clubs, could invest in a public charge station. Any city that was interested in curbing emissions would want to offer free compressed air as incentive to switch to non-polluting sustainable transportation. Vacation spots, islands, or smack in the middle of the ocean or desert. This is a way we can store sustainable energy and use it on demand around the clock without destroying the environment. Without a bottleneck of resources in a way that can continue to serve future generations. The hardest part of this project was taking the motor off my motorcycle to convert it to run on compressed air. I don't have another vehicle I can get the gas mileage that little Honda got, and I'm struggling to afford to drive my van with the cost of gas. But I decided to get this done as soon as possible, no matter what it took. 
it turned out that every day counted. When I contacted the one motorcycle show, my project was far from complete. The rear rack wasn't mounted. None of the straps were sewn on yet. The seat needed new brackets. A lot of stuff was still loosely assembled. But I got it together just in time and drove it out of the shop on low pressure. It didn't even have oil in the clutch yet. Till after the show. At this moment, I still don't know what it'll do.